As we mentioned in our last video on oxygen history, the early atmosphere of the Earth had two big oxygen concentration spikes. The first one, known as the Great Oxygenation Event around 2.3 billion years ago, led to a mass extinction of most anaerobic microbes. And the second one, around 800 million years ago, allowed for the start of complex multicellular life. As the Earth evolved, we have seen multiple periods with significantly high amounts of oxygen, some of which have correlated with the sudden increase in biodiversity. In this video, we will be looking at the specific examples of the Avalon Explosion, the Cambrian Explosion, the Devonian Period, and the Carboniferous Period. Named after the Avalon Peninsula in Canada, where a great number of Precambrian fauna was found, the Avalon Explosion is a proposed biodiversification event that gave way to the biota of the Edicariot Period. This event occurred around 600 million years ago. The diversification and morphological changes of many now extinct organisms can be seen through the fossils of the Avalon period. There are many theories to explain why this could have happened. One theory is that the changing global climate became better suited for certain organisms. After a period of extreme glaciation on Earth, 650 million years ago, called the Snowball Earth, the global climate warmed up. Another theory is that an increase in global atmospheric levels of oxygen could have been the cause. Studies have shown that there is evidence for repeated intervals of ocean oxygenation in this time period. Besides this, further investigation found that the atmospheric partial pressure of oxygen had increased by 50%. Around 530 million years ago, one of the most crucial events in animal evolution occurred, called the Cambrian Explosion. This was a time of very rapid expansion, and similar to the Avalon explosion, there was a lot of changes in a short amount of time. Many organisms began to evolve and diversify. This was a great example are the trilobites, which are extinct marine animals with a very extensive fossil record. They suddenly changed from being soft-bodied organisms to having hard shells and living in shallow seas. Scientists have many theories as to why this occurred. One theory is that the erosion of big continental rocks allowed for nutrients to wash up into the sea, giving organisms like the trilobites energy-rich food sources. But another very key factor to mention is the rise of oxygen in the Cambrian period. We know that oxygen levels in the Cambrian could reach up to 40% of today's atmospheric oxygen levels, and many scientists correlate this rise in oxygen with the booms in biodiversity. To further support this theory, more recent studies have shown that the oxygen levels of the Cambrian actually fluctuated from low to high levels. A study published by Nature Geoscience demonstrates that the rises in oxygen levels are notably correlated to bursts in animal evolution and biodiversity. For example, the appearance of the trilobites has been correlated to one of the oxygen bursts that occurred in the Cambrian, specifically between 521 and 522 million years ago. Importantly, higher oxygen levels were proven to increase the complexity of food webs. Before the rise in oxygen, most ecosystems only contained primary consumers. As organisms have more resources, they become more complex, leading to predatory behavior. Pres presence of predators puts more selection pressure on simpler organisms, considerably contributing to evolution and diversification. As we move further down the Earth's timeline, we enter the Devonian period, occurring between 419 to 358 million years ago. The Devonian period witnessed important developments in marine and terrestrial ecosystems. It was a time of great diversification, with the rise of fish, the spread of land plants, and the colonization of terrestrial habitats. This time period is known as the Age of Fishes, as the ocean ecosystems were dominated by large predatory fish. High oxygen levels played a crucial role in their evolution. Fish are dependent on oxygen for respiration, and the increased availability of oxygen allowed for the development of more efficient respiratory systems. Fish were able to extract oxygen from the water more efficiently, enabling them to grow larger and more active. It is important to note that the effect of oxygen on life is much more profound in aquatic environments compared to the terrestrial ones. Oxygen availability in aquatic environments is lower and more variable, which leads to adaptations of aquatic organisms, aiming to utilize the available oxygen with maximum efficiency. After the Devonian, we entered the Carboniferous period, occurring from 358 to 298 million years ago. The Carboniferous period was characterized by the proliferation of diverse form forests. This ancient forest laid the foundation of future terrestrial ecosystems. The appearance of large plants and the burying of large quantities of organic matter 
led to a significant rise in oxygen concentration. Atmospheric oxygen rose to approximately 35%, as opposed to the 21% seen today. These conditions have enhanced diffusion-dependent processes, such as respiration. The anatomy of certain insect groups allowed them to grow to giant sizes. Higher oxygen levels in the atmosphere provided more efficient oxygen diffusion, allowing their respiratory systems to support larger body sizes. Insects have a tracheal gas exchange system, consisting of tubes that extend from the body surface to respiring cells. In the high oxygen conditions, this diffusion-dependent respiration system allows oxygen to penetrate deeper into larger body systems. This leads to higher metabolic rates and allows energy to be allocated for growth and towards non-respiratory tissues. More oxygen meant bigger bodies. In addition to this, the ability to fly was enabled by a hyperoxic atmosphere. The first forms of wings had mainly a respiratory function, because they allowed for more efficient gas exchange. The fact that they could be used for locomotion was just an additional bonus. The theory linking insect body size and O2 atmospheric levels has been elucidated by numerous experimental tests. However, it's safe to say that a variety of factors were probably involved, such as temperature and evolution of flying predators and competitors. Effect of high oxygen levels on body size are non-linear and depend on the type of an insect. Gigantism was limited to insects with certain niches, such as those with aquatic juveniles. This leads to another hypothesis of oxygen affecting insect size. Juvenile dragonflies cannot control oxygen intake. They are threatened by higher oxygen levels. Young insects had to grow larger to avoid oxygen poisoning. As a result, the adult dragonflies were greater in size. This explains that only a narrow range of organisms had an evolutionary capacity and appropriate environmental conditions to exhibit giant sizes. By looking at these various different time periods in Earth's history, we can understand how oxygen has continuously played a crucial role in biodiversity and evolution. Although high levels of oxygen have caused a great amount of important changes, there have also been periods in time where oxygen levels were at an all-time low. Click on our next video to see how low oxygen has affected our planet.